The truth is the thing that defines whether a person is with the jama'ah. Not the majority. Not the majority. Because the majority, ya ikhwan, you will find in most times are misguided. And that's why Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said what he said. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu said what he said. And that's why, because many of the people will say, that why is it that you keep mentioning the term Ahlul Hadith? Why is it that you keep mentioning the term Salafi? Why is it that you keep mentioning the term Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah? These terms, ya ikhwan, are all synonymous terms. They are all one and the same. That the people of Ahlul Hadith are the people who stick to the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa stringently. And the people of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah are the people who stick to the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and the way of the companions. And the people of Dawatu Salafiya, the Salafiyun or the Salafis, are those people who stick to the way of the Prophet Sallallahu and the way of his companions. One and the same. And this usage of these terms should not be something that should scare us. Because we mentioned the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu when he said that indeed Islam began as something strange, it will return as something strange. So Tuba, be upon who? Upon the Ghuraba. What title did he give them? Al Ghuraba. That they are the Ghuraba, the strangers. He didn't say that they are the Muslimin. He didn't say that they are the Muslims. But of course they are Muslims. Just because they are the Ghuraba doesn't mean that they are the Muslims. They are the Muslims. But they have specific characteristics. That they are the ones who rectify and correct the people when the people become corrupted. They have characteristic. This is their characteristic. And the Prophet ﷺ gave them the title Al Ghuraba. In the other hadith that we mentioned, when the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the division of the Ummah, and he mentioned the Ummah will divide into 73 sects, all of them into the hellfire except for one, Wahi al Jama'ah. What title did he give them? The Jama'ah. He didn't say that they are Muslims, and of course they are Muslims, no doubt. They are Muslimun, they are Muslims. But the Messenger of Allah ﷺ defined them and singled them out with the title Al Jama'ah. They are the Jama'ah. And in other narrations, when the Messenger of Allah وسلم, gave them the title, Suadul Adam, and they are also Da'ifatul Mansura, the victorious aided group. So this, these titles are not titles that should scare us because they all refer back to one and the same. So the Firqatul Najiyah, the saved sect in the hadith of the 73 sects. Al Jama'ah, the main, the main body or the group. Aswadul Adam, the main body. The Taifatul Mansura, the saved or aided group. Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the people of Sunnah and the people of the Jama'ah. Ahlu Sunnah, the people of the Sunnah. Ahlul Hadith, Ashabul Hadith, Ahlul Athar. All of these terms refer back to the same group of people. And our Salaf and the great Imams of the past used these titles. And they were upon these titles. But these aren't just titles that you just paste upon your chest, that you put them upon a t shirt. And you say that I am him. I am Ahlul Sunnah because on my t-shirt it says Ahlul Sunnah. And you don't stamp it upon your forehead that I am Salafi, so therefore I am Salafi. No, rather it is not just based upon mere claims. Because everyone can make a claim. But the claim is only proven true by action upon it. How many are there? Is there a Muslim upon the face of the earth that you know? I don't know of any Muslim upon the face of the earth, except that he will say that I am upon the kitab and the sunnah. Every Muslim will claim this. I have never met a Muslim upon the face of this earth, except that he says, I am upon the book and the sunnah. I am upon the kitab and the sunnah. Even the one who curses Abu Bakr, he says, I am upon the kitab and the following of Muhammad. Even the one who curses Umar and Uthman and curses Aisha, and they, and they curse them severely. And they accuse them of being kuffar from the Rafid Shia, from the Rawafid, from the earliest sects of Islam that appeared. In fact, the Shia, they appeared in the time of the Sahaba, in the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib. In fact, before the year 100 Hijrah, as Ibrahim al ruhaili one of the scholars of Medina, mentions in his Mawqib Ahlul Sunnah, Min Ahlul Bid'a, he mentions that four deviated sects appeared whilst the companions were still alive. Four deviated sects. So there's, there are people upon the earth who commit innovations, commit deviations, plant terrorist bombs, declare the rulers to be unbelievers, declare Muslims to be unbelievers, 
due to them committing major sins. That they say when they see a Muslim commit a major sin, they say, you kafir. They claim to be a kafir because they see him drinking. These deviations, when you ask him, what is your deen? He'll say, kitab and sunnah. In England, masajid, masjid, ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah. Inside the masjid, a grave where the dead are worshipped and called upon. Ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah. Does the title befit their actions? The title is one thing, the actions are, are something else. If I was to take a bottle of water, we have this bottle of water here, mashallah. Blue waters, premium, purified water. Huh? Premium, purified water, clear water, you can see. Half a bottle, but never less water. If I was to take that label off the bottle, take the label off, get a bottle of Johnny Walker whiskey. Take the label of the Johnny Walker bottle of whiskey and place it on top of this one. Does this change the reality of what's contained in this bottle? Does it change the reality? Still water inside. I can put Johnny Walker on the outside. Johnny Walker whiskey, 8% whatever. In reality, inside is blue waters, premium purified water. That's what's inside. Changing the name of something as Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions does not change the reality. Does not change the reality. If a person is a person of deviation, a person of innovation, opposing the sunnah of Allah's messenger, cursing the companions or cursing the scholars, attacking Shaykh Rabi', attacking Shaykh bin Baz, attacking the scholars of Ahlul Hadith, cursing Imam al Bukhari, cursing Ahmed ibn Hanbal, cursing Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, attacking Shaykh al Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, cursing Shaykh al Albani. Cursing Shaykh Muqbil, cursing Shaykh Ubaid al Jabari, all of these Imams of the Sunnah, scholars of the Sunnah, is the reality. He says, I am Salafi. Do his actions relay in reality his claim? Then we say, No, you are deficient in your claim. Your claim is deficient because a person is not just judged upon the title that he gives himself, it's the action upon that which he calls himself. That is more important than the title itself. That's why some of the scholars hold it. It is not obligatory to call yourself Salafi. Not obligatory to call yourself Salafi. So you don't say to a person, are you Salafi? He says, well, I don't know Salafi, but I follow the Quran, the Sunnah, and I follow the way of the Sahaba in reality. And he does. He takes from the books of the early Salaf. He takes from the books that we mentioned yesterday. Sharh al-Sunnah, al-Sunnah wal-Khallal, al-Sunnah wal-Marwazi, Kitab al-Sunnah of Imam Ahmed. He takes from the books of the Aqeedah of the Salaf. From Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, Aqeedah al-Hamawiyyah, Aqeedah al-Tadmuriyyah, Aqeedah al-Wasitiyyah. And he takes from the books of the great Imam, Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz, Shaykh Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i, Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi, Shaykh al-Almani, Shaykh al-Fawzan. And he takes from their books and their works. But he says, I don't call myself Salafi. He's still a person who's upon the madhab of the Salaf. Still upon the madhab of the Salaf. He is still Salafi. He's still Sunni. He's still Athari. Why? Because he fulfills